Remember by Christina Georgina Rossetti. This is Christina Rossetti. Uh, her name in full is Christina Georgina Rossetti. She was there in uh, from 1830 to 1894. First, we'll talk about the poetess. Uh, Rossetti was an English poet who was born in London, UK. And she has written romantic, devotional, and children's poems. Uh, this poem, Remember, was uh, published by Rossetti in 1862 at a part of her collection, uh, her major collection, actually, Goblin Market and other poems. Uh, Rossetti was best known for her ballads and her mystic religious lyrics. Um, it is significant that her poetry is marked by a lot of symbolism and intense feelings. Um, she wrote this poem at the age of 19, uh, but it was not published until uh, she was 31, uh, entitled with the poem Goblin Market and other poems. Um, and she became one of the finest poets in Victorian, Victorian age. And um, as a token of gratitude, uh, she won the this Locus Awards for Goblin Market in 2018, very recently. So this is the poem. As this poem uh, has followed the Petrachan sonotarian style, the first eight lines uh, are known as the octave. And the ninth line, uh, which is called as the turning point of the poem, is called as the Volta. And the remaining uh, six lines uh, is what we called as the Sestet. Next, we'll move on to the poem in brief. This poem, The Remainder, is a Petrachan sonnet, uh, which has written to a lover as a grief. The poem explores a grief as the speaker entreats her loved one to remember her after her death. Therefore, from the beginning, uh, she asks him to remember her even when his memory of her begins to fade. The speaker wishes to remain forever with her love in some way. So that is why uh, she's asking him to remember. She also doesn't want her absence to cause him pain. So therefore, um, uh, the narrator gives her beloved the permission to forget her gradually because uh, she feels that it is better to forget and smile than to remember and be sad. So that is the summary. And if we talk about the octave, uh, the tone of the octave is a bit contemplative on the topic of death. And the narrator can finally be at peace because she has uh, renounced her desire for earthly pleasures such as the physical presence of her beloved. She is even accepting of death content to exist only in her beloved's memory. Uh, that is a major thing uh, which Octave brings out. But however, she has not yet made peace with the possibility that her lover will forget her. Therefore, this form of death would be uh, more painful than her physical expiration. And the Volta. Uh, the Volta in Volta, what is significant in Volta is uh, it used to change this narrator's tone as this ninth line of the sonnet uh, is known as the break, or it is the turning point between the octave and the sestet. So this volta uh, typically accompanies a change in attitude, but octave brings out, it used to change and brings out a resolution. So this turn is signaled by Rossetti's use of the word yet. 
and that's how the argument of the sonnet changes its uh, direction at this point which is known as the volta and in the sestet the narrator renounces the need to be remembered which is ironic because the poem is titled remember and at the end she wishes her loved one to be happy even if that means forgetting her because she used to get uh, a self realization over there therefore she sacrifices her personal desire in an expression of uh, true love so she thoroughly decides that and next we'll see the themes of this poem first one is the persistence of love second death and life remembrance and forgetting and relinquishment the first one persistence of love uh, here the speaker's love for her beloved is stronger than her desire to remember her after she's gone so she'd rather happy to be forgotten than maintaining in his memories as she is at the verge of death a marker of true love so she as i told she used to realize it so this quotation yet if you should forget me for a while and afterwards remember do not grieve she wants him to remember her but also she does not want uh, that to bring him pain so it is clear that this uh, the intimacy between them would be disconnected after her departure uh, but anyhow they will attach with souls even after life with the persistence of their immense love the next theme is death and life the speaker first addresses about life and uh, she draws her beloved's attention to her death she was talking about the things they did uh, the things they have planned for their future and after that she is uh, making his attention to her death this poem uh, actually conveys a universal and a philosophical message that is the permanency of death and transience of life with its uh, cyclical nature so it's clear that uh, death is inevitable for all of us when she is gone far away into the silent land a huge distance had made them to be apart through this inevitable death she says that when you can no more hold me by the hand so this implies that physical love and eternal love are most essential aspects of love and life although the evilness of death come in the middle of these two lovers if we talk about the remembrance and forgetting uh, this poem remember and the word remember is the word that summarizes the major theme remembrance so this word reflects the speaker's obsession of being remembered by her loved one after her departure because she thinks that that's the only way to uh, be with love with him uh, even after death no i half turn to go yet turning stay so with this it's clear that uh, it is unbearable to leave the one who sh whom she loves the most the theme of remembrance is highly brought forward in the octave as a substitute to the speaker's eternal suffering the word remember is repeated four times uh, in this poem to emphasize the sustenance of love in accordance with the remembrance despite the finality of life and with the quotation better by far you should forget and smile than that you should remember and be sad so that's a place where she uh, brings out this theme of forgetting uh, she is pondering her impending death and releasing her lover from the responsibility of uh, enshrining her in his memory because uh, as i told before she fears it will cause him pain she doesn't like it therefore she says him to forget her and be happy the last theme is relinquishment um, this poem conveys how the speaker wishes her lover to react when he she has left this world 
So therefore, as a sign of relinquishment, the poetess decides to give up uh, on her desire to be remembered within her lover's memory. So it's clear that with the quotation, uh, with the line, with the phrase of uh, do not grieve for if the darkness and corruption leave and better by far you should forget and smile. While the speaker encourages him, she expresses her true love towards her beloved without letting him to live as uh, dead for the sake of dead. So therefore relinquishment uh, is very clear on that as she wishes for that. And this poem, remember, ultimately deals with the struggle between physical existence and the afterlife. So Rossetti uh, was able to grapple with the idea of a physical body, which is subjected to death and decay and how it relates to an eternal soul. So next we'll move to the techniques of this poem. First one is the form and structure. Um, this has followed an Italian Petrucian sonnet, which it uh, consists of an octave, volta, and a sestet. And also this is an elegiac poem. The second one is the title. Remember, this is more significant because uh, obviously it has an imperative tone to remember. So she commands her lover not to be forgotten. That's why she's thoroughly saying to remember with the title. Third one is the narrative form. Uh, this is uh, actually a dramatic monologue uh, as the lover, the girl only speaking over here. And uh, to highlight that she has used uh, the pronouns of you and our. And this poem has uh, followed the rhyming scheme of A, B, B, A, A, B, B, A, C, D, D, E, and C, E. And if you move to the repetition, the phrase gone away highlights the boundary between life and death. Uh, no more uh, illustrates the disconnecting fear of the speaker. The word remember it has repeat, uh, repeated four times in this sonnet because uh, to emphasize that she fears that her lover will forget her. So that's why it has repeated that much. And the word forget to avoid the speaker's lover being sad and suffer and to bring him peace. And the tone of the poem in the octave, uh, the tone is a bit contemplative and it has a melancholic tone as she's a bit mourning. And in the sestet, uh, it is a bit satisfied because she uh, asks him to forget her. The next one is symbolism. Uh, the silent land refers to death and loneliness and the physical distance. And future symbolizes the expectations that they had. And the darkness symbolizes death and grief. In imaginaries, uh, this hand holding uh, is, we can imagine a kind of position between those two each other. And do not grieve, imperatively encourage him to be strong. And our future, uh, it used to imagine us, this romantic imaginary, uh, which is yet to be happened. And contradiction. Actually, this sonnet uh, brings out two contrasting concepts. As in the octave, uh, it says to remember, and in the sister, it says to uh, forget. So those two are contrasting each other. And the language, uh, Rossetti has used actually a very simple and in standard language. So we, therefore, we can say it's effective and suitable for this sonnet. Choose love, not in the shallows, but in the deep by Christina Rossetti. Thank you.